Right, so we're going to make up the gelatin plate and we're just going to follow some basic um, things. Now, I don't know about you, but I am the sort of person who doesn't cook um, to a recipe. I don't follow recipes normally, I just make it up as I go along. Um, so for me, it's quite difficult to, um, to follow a process that, um, that is very specific. But th in this case, I want you to follow this process to a T. And we're going to work with this section, method for preparing a long-lasting gelatin glycerin plate. There is another one which is a non-lasting, and that's a refrigerator plate that only requires gelatin. So it's much cheaper, but it's, and it's much more sensitive but it's also much riskier and it falls apart very easily. So, this recipe requires either Mackenzie's or Ward's gelatin. I think they're same, same. And it also requires two bottles of glycerin. I always buy this brand because it's the brand that's in the supermarket. Um, but it's just plain old glycerin. And it's two of those. It's one of these. Now, in actual fact, what you need of these is 80%. Now, I've already taken it out. So if you can see in there, it's up to here. So when, when you open yours up, it'll be only up to about there anyway. So I've just taken about 20% out. You can measure that if you like, or you can, you know, whatever you prefer, but roughly 80% of the, the container is what we're going to need. We're also going to need a spatula, we're going to need some measuring cups, we're going to need a kettle and we're going to need some cold water and a mixing bowl and we're going to need a um, tray. Now that's an ideal tray so you can see that fits an A4 piece of paper so it gives you an idea of the size of the tray. No smaller than that um, and a little bit bigger as a bonus but no smaller because your paper won't fit in there to make the print so that's a good size and that's a good tray because it doesn't have um, an embossed logo so sometimes there's an embossed logo there so or ridge bottom so it's nice and smooth which is which is perfect um, preference for um, the non-stick trays seem to be better the the just standard stainless trays when you're storing the gelatin plate you know, over the course of a year it can ha get little rust spots which then um, go into the gelatin and kind of make it go not moldy but sort of growth gets a bit of growth on it it's not really great so we want to avoid avoid that happening um, where possible so we've got that and this needs to be on a nice flat surface and it needs to be not only a flat surface but a surface that isn't going to be disturbed so it's not going to get bumped it's going to be nice and still that's really important because um, it, it can cause issues down the track but I'll explain that to you later you will need to tear up some newspaper and to do that just like that's fine and it needs to just be the width of the tray like that so it's the width of the tray and I've already made some there so all of that needs to be done in advance of the process. The other thing you need is a rubbish bin of some description really nearby because you're going to have a lot of goop that comes from the, um, from the plate when we skim it. And I'll explain that when the time comes. Okay, so as I said before, it's critical that you follow the process very carefully clearly so place a clean unbellished so I've got that on a flat surface that's nice and flat that's good that's done I've torn the newspaper into tiny strips and I've placed a cup of water in a mixing bowl I've been a bit I've been a bit literal there it's actually pour a cup of water into a mixing bowl not place it I just set it there so that's ready um, I now I need to add one bottle of glycerin now when you're doing any of these processes Try as much as you can. The, the aim of the game is not to uh, produce bubbles. We don't want any bubbles to appear in this process at all. So when you're pouring, just pour nice and slowly, slow and gentle. The glycerin is quite viscous. It's quite globby. I don't know if you can, can you see that in there? How it's quite, it's a bit hard to... Hard to see, but it's quite um, goopy. 
you, you need to, um, this has to be incorporated really carefully. I've got a bit of stuff, I can clean my bowl super well. So make sure your bowl's really clean, not like mine. I've picked up a bit of, bit of goop. I'll get down later and I'll show you how to get them out. Now what I do is I just put that upside down just so that keeps draining because it's very slow to drain out and we'll get more out of that. Okay, so I've got that in there. Um, and I now need to um, mix it gently with a spatula. Now, mix gently is not whip. Do not whip it. You're not going like this. You're very, very gently mixing the glycerin in with the water. Can you see how it's kind of funny? Like it's... Um, I might even put a sheet of paper on there so you can see better. Can you see, can you see that, hopefully you can see that that's sort of weird um, and thick and separates from the water. We have to mix this so that it is connected with the water, so it's all one. And that's just slow and steady and nice and really gently, gently. See how I've got a bubble there? I don't want to get those bubbles. So I don't want any bubbles and bubbles are basically our enemy and we want to avoid them at all costs this is the bit that most people get wrong now it's starting to go clear and it's now see the difference so that's now mixed together beautiful okay so now what i have to do is add 80 grams or about 80 percent of the container of gelatin um, and I've got to stir it. I'm going to put the kettle on so it's going to be, I might just boil that kettle first, which will be a bit noisy. Is it working? Yeah. I'm going to start mixing the um, gelatin in. So I don't put it in one big blob, just put it in nice and gently. I find this way you get less lumps. Unfortunately it's a bit whiffy, so it smells a bit hoofy because it's animal product. And if anybody if anybody is um, is vegan, um, there is an agar agar alternative, which is a seaweed. I think it's seaweed based um, alternative, which you can you can use. Um, it's not as effective, and it's not quite as um, it's not quite as. Um, uh, doesn't take such a fine um, print so I'm just mixing that together nice and slowly nice and gently I've got a couple of bubbles in there 
And if when you put yours in, you get a lot of lumps, that's not uncommon. Just go across like that and squash the lumps on the edge with your spatula. Like that. Okay, so that's combined and, and because I put the, that in pretty, pretty um, gently, I haven't got any lumps, which is good. Normally you get a few lumps, so don't stress if you get lumps, it's pretty normal. Okay, so now what I need to do is add, um, gently add one and a half cups of boiling water. So I want to avoid bubbles. So I'm going to pour from a low height and against the side of the, um, just down really low because the lower I pour from, the less bubbles are going to form. And just a dash more because I didn't fill it up properly. Okay, so now I'm going to just gently mix to avoid. Again, super gentle. So just really, really gentle. You could go trying to whip this or anything, you're going to cause major bubbles. It's not going to be pretty. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Just feel a bit of roughness down the bottom, which is the gelatin. So I just want that gelatin to dissolve. When you do have a, a bubble like this one just there, you can just go across to the edge and give it a little squash. So you can get rid of those as you're going along. Okay, so now I'm right to add my um, second bottle of glycerin and I'm just going to get the last of that first bottle in first. And add that second. Now these bottles will be handy, maybe hang on to those bottles because we could use those um, and maybe bring them around to me on the next pickup. Um, and you know, we can always use them for more materials. Hopefully we won't need to. So you can see it's quite clear, but I can, I can see that the glycerin is quite separate from the, um, from the water. So we're, we've got to combine them properly. So again, nice and gentle. This, I think this is the part that most people get wrong. They don't mix the, the glycerin into the gelatin properly. And what then happens is when they go to, um, when they go to pour, pour it in, or you know, they pour it into the tin, it all looks fine. But what happens is it ends up setting on the top, but it doesn't set on the bottom because the glycerin and the water are, are split and you end up with, with a sort of raft that's sitting on a fluid base. It's not pretty. So we want that, to, we want to avoid that and we want to just really um, make, be absolutely sure that we've mixed it up. Should be nice and clear like that. So if you, your mixture amounts are correct, it'll be lovely and clear. Okay, so now what we need to do, make sure that we give you any bumps steers, uh, we need to pour this into the lambing tin, tin um, from a low height. So this is really important. If you just go like this and go glug, 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 glug from, from up high, you're going to get lots of bubbles. So you really need to, so what I do 
is I have so that's the tray that's sitting on the tray I have it just above tray height and then I pour it in and nice again slow and steady so hopefully I'm not getting too many bubbles oh I've got a heap <laughs> the whole stack at the back this is very sticky okay can you see these bubbles this is where the um, this is where the newspaper comes in. I'll just get my bin. Okay, so what we're going to do with the newspaper, I'm just going to run it along the surface. So I'm skimming along the surface, and that's catching the bubbles, and then into the bin, and it's very sticky. So again, it's looking pretty good, but I've still got a bit at the end there. So that end's looking good. And you can kind of get to here and sort of tip it to pull it out. Now because it's good everywhere else, I'm just going to work on this bit to get these, just these last bubbles out, nearly there. If you keep doing this for too long, it's going to start to set because there's so much gelatin in it. It doesn't take much for it to set. So it'll start to set and then you'll get weird stuff going on. If when you've poured it out, it's very cloudy, that means you haven't mixed the gelatin in well enough. So that's ready to go. There's a couple of tiny little bubbles right there on the edge. I just wouldn't worry about those. They're fine. So that's... Um, nice and ready you can see it's it's um, it's got a nice uh, clear it's clear and and that's ready just to sit there without being moved at all sit there and in a couple of hours that's going to um, going to be set now those of you with um, small people and big people that are curious they're going to want to put their fingers in there so you really need to I would recommend for the parents I would do this process um, after bedtime when, so it can just sit on the bench and and it'll be fine for the evening. Um, if you've got, um, you know, like it seems like when you put a sign that says, you know, don't touch this, everybody wants to touch it, including you. So really try not to touch it at all. Um, I'll just.